this is Dave Welch with Automation Devices and today's topic we wanted to go over would be track design. The design of the track that you're going to put on one of our inlines, whether it be uh, one of the larger T18s or maybe one of our smaller inlines. But what we want to talk about it is, is the design of the track because if you're going to buy the unit and you're going to design the track yourself, we want to help you be successful. So one of the real basic things that we're trying to advise and a real simple way to break this down is when we look at the track that's on here right now, this is what we would call a good design. And let me explain to you, it's really simple to look at. As long as the height of the track is greater than the width of the track, it should have plenty of rigidity. And the problems that you're trying to eliminate or avoid are when you put your parts in a track and you turn the unit on and the parts, you want them to go straight and down the track. That's a good thing. But what happens when they don't do that? When maybe they just sit and vibrate or you'll see them move down the track and then all of a sudden they go backwards and you think, well, how could that possibly be? What that's really telling you is that the track design is inferior. It's not strong enough so that the vibration works with the track. It's actually working against the track. So we want to make sure that you make a good design. And the good design basically is as long as the height is greater than the width, it will most likely have plenty of rigidity. Uh, that's obviously the first thing that we wanted to suggest that when you're designing your track. Let me show you a track of a design that we don't recommend. So you can see what I've just set up on here. It's an incomplete track, but it's good for a discussion. Is This track is much wider than it is taller. This is very, very thin. It may be very capable of holding your part, but under vibration, this track is going to vibrate out here in this unsupported area in an unwanted way. And your part might move along here just fine, but by the time it gets out here, that unwanted vibration could make that part go completely backwards. And obviously that's going to defeat the purpose of what you're trying to do. So if you look at a track like this and say, yeah, I can, I can machine it, it's no problem, I can build it, but if the width is greater than the height now, you potentially are going to have a problem. So that's what we're trying to avoid. So let's put this other track back up here and just go over some very basic track location issues. If you have a track that's going to extend considerably further out over the inline, the further out you go, the greater the problem that you might have because the further out you're going the more unsupported track you have. If you tend to center the track over the inline, the least amount of unsupported in front of it and behind it are going to be the minimal amounts. They should be just fine as long as you're within the track length that we require as a maximum. So basically centering the track over your inline should give you your best performance. Uh, the other thing of course, just these are some of the real basics, uh, as long as that track in your inline are bolted down to a nice thick steel table and they're very rigidly bolted down, you'll probably not have any issues. But when you're looking at your basic track design, that's what we would recommend. And of course, if you have any questions or you want your track tested, send it in to us. We'll be more than happy to test it out for you on a drive unit before we ship it out for you. And that's what we would recommend. So thanks for watching.